Hi, my name is Bob and welcome back to Homestead, y'all. Uh, today we have a Wagnerware cast iron pan. This is a number eight. So that means it's eight inches on the bottom of actual cooking surface. That, that's what that number eight stands for. Now, if you measure across the top, it's going to be bigger because the edges are sloped. Um, so when you see that number, that number means the actual cooking surface. That's the size of the cooking surface. Um, but we're going to clean this one up a little bit. I picked it up at a yard sale last year. It's a Wagnerware Sydney. I think it's a thousand one zero five six is what it says on it. So that's the pan number. But you can see on these edges it has a bunch of baked on uh, just all kinds of crud that's on the sides of it. This is a perfect pan, perfect example of, of a pan that you want to use a lye bath on. That'll clean, that'll eat all this organic material off that's been baked on over the years. I don't know if that focuses on it. You can see it real well. It's a dark, cloudy, rainy day today here on the homestead, so that's why I'm working on some cast iron. But we'll put this in the lye bath and leave it overnight, and then we'll take it out tomorrow, and this most of this crud should come off here pretty easy. I don't see anything on here that should be too difficult. Some of it may be a little bit of carbon that's baked on over the years, um, but most of it's probably organic material and it should come right off there. So we're gonna take this, we'll put it in the lye bath and then we'll come back tomorrow, we'll pull it out and we'll see how well it looks and we'll give it a good cleaning and then we'll re-season this pan. Been in it two days. It'll probably take another couple of days. This had a lot of organic matter built up on it. We'll just rinse it out in our clean water here. Just to neutralize that lye. Okay. You can see quite a bit of it's already just rinsed off. We'll take our scrubber here. This is just steel wool. Take our steel wool to it. I like to do the inside first so I can see what it looks like. This pan looks real good. It is smooth. It's not pitted any. This is going to be a great pan. This is a number eight Wagner. Now this is just the first cleaning. It'll probably take another day in the lye bath. Once we clean it this time, we'll, if it doesn't come completely clean, we'll stick it back in there. But when pans have this much built up on them, generally it takes several days. Take it out, clean it, put it back in for a day or two, and take it out and clean it again. A lot of this is coming off real easy. Of course, you saw how bad it was when we put it in the lye bath. It was just crudded up, junk all over it. And it's coming pretty clean. Oh yeah, you can see our 1058 real well now. I couldn't tell if that was an eight or a six before. I 
Looks like it's a six. Or an eight, I'm sorry. 1058. get my phone out and take a picture of that so I can look it up see what year it is we'll see if we can scrape some of this off now a lot of this is organic matter but a lot of it's also carbon it's been baked on over the years this pan was well used used in the oven quite a bit probably to make cornbread yeah the inside of that I don't know how well you can tell is in great shape still some that needs to be cleaned off uh, but there's no pitting inside of it this is going to make us a great pan the number eight i love using number eight too. Uh, number eight is great to use on your stove top whether you have a gas stove or an electric stove uh, it works real well it's a great size for a stove top um, but i think this is going to clean up and make us a great cast iron pan so we'll put it back in the fly bath, we'll leave it for another day, and then tomorrow we'll see how much more of all this stuff we can get off here. Uh, but you can see, compared to what it looked like when it went in, it looks so much better. So I'm going to ease him down in here, I don't have my safety glasses on, so I'm just going to lean to the side, ease him down in there. Okay, we're back inside have our Wagner pan after we've cleaned it up, taken it out of the lye bath, put it on the wood stove for a little while and let it get good and dry. So now what we need to do is put our first coat of seasoning on it. And what I like to use is 100% grapeseed oil. I use this for the first three to five coats of seasoning. After that, as we cook with the pan, uh, of course we'll put a little bit of lard in it every time after we cook and clean with it. And that keeps your pan good and seasoned and the more you use it the better it gets now we just want to put a light coat of oil on this you don't want a whole lot of oil on here or it's going to puddle on you and you're going to have to put it back in the lye bath and re-season it again so what we want to do I use a coffee filter and then I just take a paper towel and wipe it out just to get a thin coat now you can do this in the oven you can do it on your cooktop you can even do it on your barbecue grill but we have our fire going, it's winter time, so I might as well use the heat off our wood stove. And what we'll do is we'll put a thin coat on it, we'll set it on the wood stove, and we'll leave it there till it just starts to smoke. Once it starts to smoke, then I'll take it off and let it cool, and the pan cools, then we'll put another coat on it, and we'll re repeat the process till we get four or five coats on this, and then we'll go ahead and cook in it, and the more we use it, the better it'll be. So the first thing I do, I keep some grapeseed oil in a squirt bottle and I'll just squirt some in there and I'll take a coffee filter and I'll just give it a good coating. All the way around the pan we'll get, every part of the pan will get a good coating on it. That's got the bottom coated real well. Now I'm just going to hit the sides here. I'll put a little more oil in there. The filter soaked up a lot of the oil. And then we'll hit all the sides on the inside. And then we're going to go back with the paper towel and wipe it all off. Where we just have a real thin coat of oil on here. Okay, now we'll do the outside and make sure you get every little nook and cranny 
around the rim. There's a, a sharp edge on, their, on this rim. And you need to make sure you get oil in there. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult, depending on how war they are, to get oil up right up against that rim. And we'll put a little oil on the bottom here. And of course, don't forget your handle. On your handle, you need to make sure you get in every little nook and cranny with it on both sides. And one thing when you oil this, you can take your finger and go around it and across the bottom and feel if there's anything left that you missed from the lye bath. If you do, just take a piece of scotch Brite and just hit it lightly with a piece of scotch Brite and it'll come right off usually. Okay, so that has us our oil on our pan. You can see it's nice and shiny. Now we're going to take a paper towel and we're going to wipe it off. So we're going to wipe all that oil out of there. Same with the outside, where we just have a thin coat. Now, our wood stove is right around 500 degrees right now. In the back, back there, I have a thermometer on it. It's around 500 degrees. Uh, Grapeseed oil will start to smoke at around 400 to 425. So once this pan gets up to that temperature, you'll see the smoke start coming off of it. And I'll let it set just a little bit and let it smoke. And then that's when I'll go ahead and pull it off and we'll let it cool. And then we'll repeat the process. But I think that has us pretty good for now. So we're going to set it up here and then we'll come back and we'll repeat the process till we get four or five coats on this. I can't stress enough you want thin coats. So make sure you take a paper towel or something or a rag and wipe out the oil once you put it on there. And that way it won't pull inside. I know you can flip this upside down. If you're doing it in the oven, you can put them in there upside down and put your cookie sheet under it to catch any of the oil dripping. But if you'll just put a thin coat on to begin with, you don't have to worry about that. Our Wagner pan's done now. We've seasoned it. You can see the backside and the inside here looks great we've put five coats of seasoning on it lazy uh, so it's ready to cook with the only thing is we're not going to be able to use it on our wood stove because it's a spinner and what a spinner is that means the bottom is pushed down where somebody overheated it too quick when they had it on their stove and i can show you here and it's basically what it means is it spins on the wood stove so when you set it on a flat surface it spins and that's not good uh, for heat cooking on a wood stove but we have a gas stove a propane stove our regular cook stove is so we'll be able to use this on it because the center it'll set down on top of the grates in the gas stove and it won't affect how it cooks uh, by putting it on a on a wood stove on a flat surface or if you have a glass top stove what it'll do is it, your oil won't stay even and your pan won't even up, uh, heat up evenly either. So this one's a good one. It's a 1058. So that means that it's an eight inch. It says eight right there. And this is a great little pan to cook with. So what I'll do is I'll put this over here on our cook stove. And when we cook on our cook stove, we'll use this little pan and we'll save some of our better pans to cook on the wood stove that are good and flat. Um, but if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please hit subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.